you are listening to the Spine Whisperers podcast. Please know that our doctors are here to only educate, not diagnose on this podcast. If you have any questions, please feel free to find us at www.mfwellness.org. Hello, this is Dr. Matthew Fink, Dr. Brad Maurer, Hello. and special guest, 100th episode, Judith Rose Fink. Hello. And what is your maiden name, just for the record? Massbrook. Massbrook. Not Masterbrook, but Massbrook, right? Massbrook, correct. Yeah. This is new information to me. Yeah. I always heard. Yeah, Masterbrook, yeah. right? Yeah, it's Masterbrook. Where was the... Where was the... I think as Disconnect. kids, I think as kids growing up, we just like... We never thought about math. It was always master, like master of everything. Okay. So we always thought master brook. Oh, they're brook masters. <laughs> I think I got it because when your grandfather came into the very first <coughs> office when we would sub bowl, yeah. it was master brook. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. New master information brook. for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See? I mean, this 100th episode is shaving up to be a. And I don't know if we've like, explained who Judith Rose Fink is. Oh, yeah. So. This person that's that's here on our hundredth episode is my mother, Brad's foster mother, <laughs> and then Dr. Josh's mother. So it's just us hanging out, talking to my mom, and we just had Mother's Day recently, about a couple weeks ago, and so we're just going to talk to her about her chiropractic experience and why why she absolutely loves us so much, not just because she's our mother. <laughs> okay, mom. As physicians. As yeah. physicians. Yeah. So. Can you please tell us, in your own words, your first experience with chiropractic and how you got into it and who adjusted you the very first time and kind of that lineage? Okay. Well, the first time I had hurt my neck working with my children while my husband was out of town. And when he got home, I said I couldn't look left or right or up and down. So his aunt is a chiropractor. And so I made an appointment and I went there. She adjusted me, it was great, and that was the end. Until I started teaching preschool. <laughs> which oh, is yeah, we have a lot of teachers. Three here, so. and four and five year olds. They keep you very busy and on your toes. But one day we were setting up classroom and my knee went out to the point where I couldn't walk. So then my son Joshua had just graduated from chiropractic school and I went to see him. He said I had tore my meniscus. So it took me all summer to get it back to where I was walking. So that was really my first experience. I don't know, it's just so comforting. It kept me limber because I have raised six children, <laughs> 13 grandchildren and still work and I'm able to get up and down off the floor without any problems. That's wonderful. So let's let's also talk about your passion for sewing and quilting. <laughs> that, that and the time, really... the time you slugged me. Let's talk about that. Matt, I never hit you. <laughs> <laughs> she controlled herself. Yeah, she did. She did. She did. So um, if you've been into the office, I have an unhealthy obsession with blankets. And not just blankets, but like quilts. So, true. so it's kind of weird. It is. It is kind of weird. And uh, but I love it, and I don't care. I don't care who knows. What was the theme of your favorite one you've ever created? It's called Grandmother's Garden. It was the first one I did. Okay. Who, and who and has that one? Matt and Sarah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Did you have a choice in who received it, or did Doctor Matt? show up at your house one day and no i just i knew they liked the color purples i had all this purple material and my favorite pattern is grandmother's garden okay my grandmother taught me to quilt when matthew was born i awesome. traveled overseas she come and stay with us for three weeks while he was gone and we went to sears then we bought all the material right. everything that you possibly need that i thought this is never going to work but I thought, we got all the kids in bed. It was like 9.30 at night. We put the quilt in the quilt rack, right? And she hands me this thing, and I go, what is this? She goes, it's a thimble. I go, well, what am I supposed to do with this? She goes, you wear it on your middle finger. 
I said, okay. I said, so show me how this goes. And she goes, oh, you sort of rock your hands back and forth and back. So I put it on my finger. I stabbed my thumb, put a Band-Aid on it, tried it again. Three stitches. I said, it's 1030 and I'm going to bed. <laughs> Ed, with his travels and what he did, had all these extra shirts that they were getting rid of. So I took all the shirts, I cut them into uh, hexagons, and when the children played sports, I took all my little squares with me and sat and watched and sewed through right. soccer practices and everything. That's, That's very nice. Yeah. How I got the first one done. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that you cut up all those shirts and like you practiced before you like really got good at it. My, my daughter has one that it's a quote with all her, not all of them, but like a lot of the tournaments we would go to the here and right? out of town, you'd buy the t-shirt and then, yeah, she has a, a big quilt with all, a lot that's, of, a lot of her t-shirts from those softball that's awesome. tournaments. Yeah. That is really great. In, in our family, it was like you, you get married and you get a marriage quilt. You have a baby and you get a baby quilt. The quilts are just so wonderful. Anyway, the reason why we're talking about that is because my mother has also had some some hand and wrist issues from quilting and sewing so much. So we've been doing a lot of adjusting hands, doing laser on hands. So to cue into her point with how she feels so limber and well taken care of here. Maybe she didn't say well taken care of, but I'm adding that she in. She did say limber. <laughs> <laughs> um, <It is. laughs> she does a lot of stuff here. So yeah, I was going to bring that up. Like, she definitely takes advantage of what we offer. I would say, yoga, yoga, chair yoga, yoga, massage, laser adjustment. Yeah, the yoga and chair yoga. What a blessing that's been for this practice. Uh, to get people that are like not shy about about doing it, but like not sure if that's for them, and then giving them a trial trial run. And then, like, absolutely falling in love with it and doing it every every week. And the, the chair yoga and the regular yoga, it's just like... Rejuvenates yeah, yeah. your body. Yeah. It sounds like during all your family events that wiffle ball games come up. <laughs> and it sounds like you yourself, maybe it's because you're so limber, are a great wiffle ball player. I like to pitch to the boys. Okay. So and they pitching. know not to hit, hit them at me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dr. Matt, do you feel like you learned most of your wiffle ball skills from your mother? Or? Yeah. Uh, gr growing up, we didn't. We played a lot of all kinds of different sports, but like wiffle ball, wiffle ball, and cone soccer. It was uh, and basketball. Mom used to pitch, but she never really hit. And now that we're doing more Mother's Day f extravaganzas at, at Dr. Josh's house. Like it's more of uh, it's more of she does the last she ten or twelve. Bat. Everyone else, you know, the kids get to bat and the adults play outfield. But mom at the very end does like about twelve to fifteen hits, and um, she made contact every time this last year. So all right, she's a force to reckon with. That's for sure. On another note, when we think about mothers, we think about people that listen, people that care, people that you go to in times of need because you know sometimes that dad doesn't understand <laughs> and it's just it's just a wonderful thing to have parents come in and get adjusted and have such great wonderful faith in you to be able to take care of them what a blessing mothers are so uh mom we love you and thank you so much oh you're welcome thank you i have uh, one last question I'm sure our patients and our listeners would like to know just a little bit of information about Dr. Josh and Dr. Matt when they were younger. You know, is oh, there any, sure. anything you, any information, any dirt we can share? They weren't really too bad. I mean, I had all five boys, and I was raised with five sisters. So when I got five boys, I was like, you have got to be kidding. I know what to do with them. You know, and the best thing I could do was say, go outside and play. Right. And, you know, Josh is sort of somebody that antagonizes people. <laughs> huh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Oh, Weird. yeah. I mean, he, he would start, he would get them all together just to go after their older brother, Jason. Okay. 
I, I've heard a few of these, yeah. Yeah. Well, Michelle recants the story very well. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle says basically they, yeah. the younger ones had to be on Josh's side yes. just because they weren't sure what was going to happen. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they're not that bad. I mean, not that they're, bad. they're boys, That's you know. Right. Yeah. You just have to learn. I had to really learn how to let them grow without holding them back. Ah, uh, man, I am not doing good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you as a parent, you're saying? Yeah, oh. yeah. I need to be more like my mother. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard it to is. say. You have to choose. You have to think about what they want and what you want and figure out the compromise. That's the biggest thing. And I learned a lot of that from the children and from teaching preschool. You could teach some preschool. Maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. like on Fridays. I did. I mean, yeah. Fridays you yeah. can teach a preschool. And you can I just needed, I just needed to put what my mother's telling me to do. Yeah. Um, I guess I really didn't, I mean, I didn't really ask for any advice. But like, it's free and it's right here. Matthew, you were pretty easy going. Except in school. I don't know. You didn't really give me too much problems in school. I don't know. Probably, I, I didn't know about maybe that's it. No, I think that people still are amazed that I spent so much time uh, in school suspensions. I was so interested in what everybody else was doing. And I really still am like that. I always check on everybody. And I, and I feel like that's what really got me into trouble. There was one time where we were supposed to go to Six Flags. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And that was like one demerit away from not being able to go. <laughs> and mom sat me down she's like listen I signed up for this trip I'm going to Six Flags with you guys if you don't make this trip and I have to go without you it's not going to happen buddy so like for the rest there was like three weeks left or something and like for the rest of the school year I was like an angel and people were like what what's going on why aren't you like what's wrong with it yeah I was like listen there's a there's a couple things that you don't do and one is um, upset Judy Rose because, like, she doesn't get too upset. But when you do, you know you've, you're have you in the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cross the yeah. line. Uh, um, that's my mom, Judy Rose. Please, please take care of your mothers. Because all they want is what's best for you. Um, and that'll do it for myself and Judy Rose and Dr. Brad. Um, thank you for tuning in and listening. And be sure to like and follow us on our socials. If you have any questions to me. It is Dr. Matt at mfwellness.org. Thank you. Nice job, guys. A big thank you goes to Hug Monster Sound for all the hard work they put into making us sound so great.